Welcome back. You are on bio biology lesson 2.2. So we're now on section two, flow of energy in an ecosystem. So autotrophs, let's talk about that. An autotroph is an organism that collects energy from sunlight or inorganic substances to make food. This is something that you should be writing down. They are also the foundation of all ecosystems because they make energy available for all other organisms. A heterotroph is the opposite of an autotroph. So a heterotroph or a consumer is an organism that gets its energy by consuming other organisms. There's four types of organisms. A herbivore eats only plants, so it eats autotrophs. A carnivore eats animals. An omnivore eats both plants and animals and a detrivore eats fragments of dead matter. So your examples would be a rabbit eating grass, a bear eating fish, humans who aren't vegans eating both meat and plants, and a detrivore would be something like a worm. They're eating dead matter, flies, and down here I know everybody has seen a buzzard, right? they eat dead matter. So remember earlier in the video we talked about there were three different ways that you could model this energy flow through the ecosystem and the first one is going to be a food chain. So make sure you're writing down food chain. Food chain and food webs model the energy flow through an ecosystem and each step in a food chain or a food web is called a trophic level. Organisms at each level get their energy from the trophic level below them. Everything on this slide you'll need to copy down, especially the diagram. Food chains. A food chain is a simple model that shows how energy flows through an ecosystem. So starting with the plant, which is the producer, moves to the herbivore grasshopper, which moves to an omnivore, the mouse, to the carnivore, the snake. But a food web, as you can see, is completely different. A food web is a model representing the many interconnected food chains and pathways in which energy flows through a group of organisms. So I realize that the food web is more complicated to draw than a food chain. And I don't expect you by any means to draw this intricate of a pattern. What I do want to see in your notes that you do start with, um, let's say, this rabbit and then it can go to a coyote, okay? And then the coyote can go in many different directions, okay? Um, so the point is, is that it can loop back. If you remember back to chapter one, and we had the scientific method, it went from the top, have a question or make an observation, and then it went all the way down to conclusion. And when you got to the conclusion, it wasn't a finality. It wasn't the end. You either went back in this direction or you went back in this direction. So a food chain moves in only one direction, whereas a food web can go in many different directions. So I don't expect you to draw this elaborate drawing that you can see on your slideshow, but I do expect you to do something. So the food chain went just like this. It moved down the line. The food web, I want you to start with the jackrabbit and show that the jackrabbit gets ate by the coyote, right? But I want you to also notice that the coyote can eat the roadrunner, the coyote can eat the kangaroo, and as long as you do that, I'll be happy. And then at the very end, you do have still always in a food chain, food web, or a food pyramid, you are going to have the top predator that it doesn't loop back anywhere. Okay, for our last slide, please write down the following. Models of energy flow, ecological pyramids. An ecological pyramid is a diagram that shows the relative amounts of energy, biomass, or numbers of organisms at each trophic level. Biomass is the total mass of living matter at each trophic level. So you'll be drawing two of the three pyramids today, and the third pyramid, this one, we'll be making a note about. So this one should be titled Pyramid of Energy, and has one, two, three, four levels. So much like 
the pyramid for food, the food pyramid. You've been learning about that since you were little. Proteins are at the bottom because it's what we need the most. And fats are all the way at the top. Now, we still need fats and oils. They're not bad. We need those to have healthy hair, healthy skin, healthy nails. We need to have them to have healthy cells. If you're not getting enough fat in your diet, your cells get corrupted and that opens you up to different diseases and even cancer. But just like too much of a good thing can be bad, so it needs to be balanced. So for the pyramid of energy, the first level here is where your primary producers are and they have 100% of all the energy. But while they're there, they are losing energy in the form of heat. So if we go up to the next tier, we still have primary producers there, or excuse me, primary consumers, and they're up to 10%, and they are also losing energy in the form of heat. Here in the third one, 1% 1 secondary consumers, and at the very top, the third level consumers and you can see we started with a hundred here and we continued to go down drastically until a hawk or a human we have to expend a lot of energy in order to get just that little bit of energy to sustain us so that's why we have to eat more than say minnows or plankton pyramid of biomass it's the same thing but what I want you to know is that it decreases as it goes up. Same as this one decreases as it goes up. And I want you to know, just make a note next to your pyramid, populations decrease as they move up the pyramid. So in the ocean, the top predator would be the shark, and on land, it would be humans.